Right, hi all. Um, welcome to Tunnel Barn Farm today. Thought we'd jump on the camera and talk to you about the feature that we're here doing. So, it actually looks a nice bright day now, but it was a ground frost this morning, quite a harsh frost. Got quite a cold wind coming off our back today. And we're gonna go through how we approach a swim like this. We're on peg 19 on Newpool, we're fishing maggots. And in essence, when do you ping it? and when do you pot it. So I'm gonna talk you through my rigs, how I approach the peg, what depths. So let's uh, go from there. Right, so we're on peg 19 on New Pool today. And it's a great winter peg to be honest. And I've picked this peg mainly because there's lots of options to choose from. We can find any depths we want. Today I've plumbed up the deepest part of my peg, which is actually 13 metres to my right and at six metres, which is probably just a shade over five foot. And then I found, I've gone, I didn't want to go too close to the plant pot because it's actually got lots of snags coming off it. So I've gone about a metre and a half off. Oh, sorry, just got scared by the ducks. And it's about four foot there and it's actually quite nice and flat. So I chose to fish there and also I've got three foot down each edge. I could get shallow if I wanted to, but with how clear the lake still is, I didn't want to go any any shallower than that. So I'll just get my maggots on because I'm a typical male and I can't multitask. So the reason why I went four foot and five foot, the deepest part and over here, was because as the fish tend to wake up, they don't always want to be in the deepest part, especially when that sun comes up. So I'd actually started the match by tapping into maggots on the five foot line. And it took probably 10, 15 minutes to get a response. But after that, we had a run of fish, but it was clearly obvious the fish wanted to back off. So I switched to this four foot line, very similar, caught a few quick fish, had to wait a while for a bite, felt like the fish had backed off. And I started to come back and up my feed through my pot and it was clearly obvious today that as soon as you fed you got a response so rather than keep coming in and refeeding my pot I picked the catapult up and I started pinging not dramatic but probably every minute two minutes anything from five to ten maggots and, it, and the peg got much better it got really good and to be honest, each side was as good as five foot or foot, four foot, but I felt as the day went on, the four foot line was much better as this line you can see now I'm catching on. So that was brilliant, to be honest, and you could really tell that feeding the catapult transformed the peg. So with this, I started priming my short line. As the day went on, I started feeding quite heavy, and hopefully in a minute, we can drop on the short line and we can catch her a few short. Right, so that's another Tunnel Barn F1 caught on the long line. So once we get this one in, I'm gonna to talk to you about the rigs I've used today and why I've used those rigs. But this is a sure sign that spring is on its way, the way the fish are responding today to this bait being pinked. So rigs today, very simple. I know that terminology is used a lot, but for me, sorry, just get the bait off the hook. It's two different types of rigs, same float, I use a Phil Watts Carbon Winter Slim. It's got a 1.5 bristle, so it's nice and sensitive. Carbon, so if you want it to fall through the water and you want to register the shot, that's an option, but it's also nice and stable. So, 015, it's got to be quite durable. So I use 015 Power Optimum line, and then I use 09 to a 20 hook. So hooking the maggots back to front through the pointy end, a 20 hook is ample, still lots of point of the uh, hook show, and I use a, a six inch hook length, only because I believe it just gets your, your loop to loop 
and your shot further away from your hook make everything a lot more invisible to the fish shotting pattern so i have two rigs that is it i have a bulk of either one or two dropper and that's typically if you've got lots of fish in your peg or you're having a great day like i'm having today on your short line later on when the fish are feeding where you want to get your bait down to the bottom where the fish are feeding and be really efficient now the other rig if you'd excuse me i'm just going to grab the other top yep identical setup slightly lighter float this is a 4x12 rather than a 4x14 but you probably can't see from there i've got five number 10s strung up the rig and earlier on in the session where the bites were a little bit more finicky and i'm kind of being intrusive trying to find the fish around the peg rather than them coming to my feed i feel like the lighter rig falling through the water definitely catches you more fish earlier on in the session so earlier on in the session when i was potting bait nice light rig nice delicate bait uh, bites sorry but later on in the day when i've been pinging quite heavily up the pot and there's lots of fish in your peg bulk and dropper nice and positive and the same shotting pattern short so nice and simple two shotting patterns and two rigs kind of do everything that you need so today's bait choice trusty old maggots so i've actually brought three points of reds with half a point of whites i think it's good to have a change up catch on two whites one red and white double red and just having a few whites in the mix really helps sometimes get you that extra bite now the reason i've gone for maggots is well i've caught a lot of silfish today i think we've had a gudgeon we've had perch we've had skimmers we've had a bigger bream um, obviously we've had f1s we've had we've had a carp everything eats maggots and what that allows me to do especially on the pinging line i can ping more bait and i know everything's being eaten where we talked about earlier where it's actually a hard ground frost this morning the water's still quite clear and although the fish are waking up if i was to sit on this peg and i was to be quite aggressive with pellets there's it's you, i wouldn't have the same response you probably might not even get a bite and you'd ruin your peg so maggots it's a brilliant bait choice through the winter but still in spring where i can be a little bit more aggressive with it everything's starting to wake up silver fish are eating it and that's been proven today with this feature where i could catapult quite aggressively um, and really attract some fish into my peg right so we've had a brilliant day catching fish on our two long lines and i'm just about to come in and see if we can catch some fish short but before i do that i'm going to talk to you about timings now i think timings are a massive part of not just match fishing any type of fishing where the sun's starting to drop but the water's probably the warmest it's been all day and the fish are naturally this is the time they're going to feed so i've left that short line and probably for two hours I've primed it where when I've gone out and I've kind of got my pole to the top kit in two sections before I ship out, every five minutes or so I'll chuck a handful of maggots there and I want the swim to be primed, I want the fish to be confident there, I want them competing for the bait and if you go on it too early and catch a couple of quick fish you might disrupt that so I like to leave it for as long as possible obviously we've been catching well out and because i'm kind of the only one in this area i probably could have carried on catching out but i want to show you the importance of coming short generally they're a bigger stamp of f1 and you can do a big weight in a match so i'm going to drop in and let's see if i can put the theory into action so i have been priming this line but as per i will go out and i'll flick the rig in a straight line and i'll feed over the top of it and I've got the rig with a bulk and a dropper because this is going to be the positive line where hopefully the fish are going to be feeding. Now, oh, a bite straight away. And this is actually a skimmer. It kind of bolsters earlier when I said you can feed maggots quite aggressively because everything eats maggots. I mean, this skimmer this time of the year, that's eating the maggots, the perch, the gudgeon. I mean all the carp I've had the F1s so that is the beauty of why we've chose to fish maggots today anyway back to the rig bulk and a dropper 
bulking a dropper because this is my positive line this is where I'm feeding aggressive this is where I believe the fish are going to have a, a chew as it's kind of the witching hour in the match so but saying that you can always catch on the light rig you might have a day where the fish are up in the water they're kind of following the bait down they don't want to be feeding really hard to the bottom so there is always a place for that lighter rig but at the moment we're using the positive rig and it seems to be better so the rig's gone in feed some bait just short of my float is what i like to do i like to be able to feed and fish just the other side of my feed it's not right or wrong sometimes you catch right on top of your feed but my maggots are just the other side kind of if there's any wary fish because the water's still quite clear just off your feed i'd like to think that gets you a few more bites so i didn't actually get an indication that time when i fed around it so oh <laughs> spoke too soon had a bite just kind of touch on a back shot i've got a back shot on today although it's flat calm i've got the wind off my back and you'd probably say well is there any need for a back shot but for me there is because there's toe if i didn't have that back shot the float would move around so once i see that bottom shot register i've kind of put my back shot just onto the water and everything's taut then i'm primed and waiting for that bite again looking at my float looking for any indications and for me there's a lot of fish in that peg i'm getting an indication every time so what i might do next try if we want to put my pole pot in just kind of rather than feeding 20 maggots by hand i might feed 10 maggots with a pot around my float and keep everything nice and tight and see if that entices a bite so just looking at my float looking for any indication kind of thinking about the next move what's the next move why am i not getting a quick positive bite and there you go kind of pricked one then which tells me that again the fish are active in my peg being a warmer day i'm out of the wind there's a lot of fish there what am i going to do next to make a to make that indication into a bite well i'm thinking maybe next time feed a bit more aggressive rather than 20 maggots falling through the water column fish intercepting them and there's a fish i'm gonna feed just as a trial I'll put 40 maggots in then i'm not gonna feed when i go back in so what i'm actually gonna hope for now is those maggots are gonna be on the bottom by the time i get this and go back out there and those fish are gonna be feeding on them rather than flirting 20 maggots and obviously encouraging those fish to come off the bottom and we've got to remember it's a foot deeper here than it was when i was catching against the plant pot a second ago now look at the colors of that f1 that is beautiful So I'm just going to change my maggots. I've actually got one white and one red on at the moment. Bit of an old faithful of mine. Especially as the, the fish are waking up. Tend to fish more of a single red maggot in the depths of winter. But as per the feature today, this is kind of centric around the fish waking up in springtime. I ship out to my mark, which is on the joint. Flick the rig out. Marker on the far bank, so I know I'm in line every time so excuse the hooter i think the match is finished on a different pool now i'm not going to feed now i fed two handfuls when we hooked that last one and because we were getting lots of little indications and i pricked one before i'm just going to sit now and see by feeding before if that encourages the fish to be feeding on the bottom oh, i missed a bite the theory was nearly right but i'm not going to feed now because we know last time probably had 50 maggots in there and I just missed a bite. So always miss a bite, flick the rig out, flick the right left, flick the rig, left right, sorry, straight in front, keep everything in nice taut line. Float settled, back shots just in the water, so I'm primed now to strike if we get any indications. Typically, that missed another bite. Typically, these short fish when you do get a proper bite from one of these f1s is a really jerky fast straight under bite and you don't tend to miss them 
So you get the odd slow drag under from perch and we've had a few of those today. So I'm thinking what to do next. So I'm still getting lots of indications like there's lots of fish there. So I'm just going to be a little bit patient. We know there's some bait on the bottom. And there we go, that could have been the issue you see. So we've actually caught a roach. So have we got lots of silver fish in the peg? Why have we got lots of silver fish? Are the F1s there? Or are there no F1s? Are they backed off your feed? How come there's silver fish in your peg? Well, I'm not going to change anything dramatically yet. I'm going to stick one white, one red, and I'm hooking them, and we'll try and get you a, a close-up later on at the pointy end of the maggot and that just allows me to still use a small hook but now I've got lots of hook points showing so this time flicking the rig out and I'm gonna feed this time back to what we were doing before 20 maggots just short of my float everything's gone in taut let the rig settle watch the bulk settle the float missed the bite you see going back before where Actually, I've missed a bite then when I fed, which tells me the fish are coming up, feeding through the water column, and that's not ideal. This time of the year where it's actually going quite cold now, the sun's gone, you don't want to start feeding loads and thinking those fish are going to come up shallow and you're going to catch them like you would in the summer. So we're just going to lower the rig back in. Hopefully some of those maggots have got to the bottom. Holding everything taut against the back shot. Few indications. Now look, it might be silverfish. And what could we do? Okay, if the F1s have backed off, then I think this is a, a skimmer. If the F1s have backed off and your peg's fairly flat, you can just add another section on. Just go a bit further out, see if the fish are backed off. But this time, unhooked itself. Nice and Mr. Skimmer. In a match scenario, I'd be saying to myself now, oh, okay, then that short line is not as good as that long line. And I would be handful of bait. I'd get my next top kit and I'd go out there and I'd catch one long. But I'm going to persist short. And this time I'm just going to put my pole pot on and I'm just going to feed a little neat pile of bait and see if we can pick one of those F1s. So again, don't be scared to keep ringing the changes and thinking to yourself, well, why am I catching silverfish? Why are the F1s? Because obviously we've caught a lot of F1s there. So I've just put a little map flexi pot on, any of the mediums, because I'm not going to feed loads. Flick the rig out to my marker. Feed the 15 maggots. Hold the rig out just to allow the maggots to go through the water column and I'm going to lower the rig oh. not sure if I foul up one then or that was a silver fish and apologise for the elastic hanging out the end of my pole so we're going to lower the rig down keep it all straight back shot just touching the water and I personally think we've got a lot of silver fish in there. We're going to persist though. And again, I'm thinking, what do I do next? If there are genuinely a lot of silver fish because they're, they're feeding well, I'm going to up my feed. I'm going to put a, a handful of bait in whatever I hook now. If it's a silver fish, I'm going to feed 40 maggots over the top. If it's an F1, I might reset the trap with a pot. But at the moment, there's a lot of distraction in that peg. In a match scenario, like I said, I'd be looking to go down the edge. I'd be looking to go back out long way. We've had a really nice day pinging maggots. And although I'm just concentrating on catching short, I'd probably be pinging a few maggots long still on my two long lines, just to keep everything going, just in case. Obviously, it'd be nice now if I was catching 50 pound of F1s, brilliant. But this is real life scenario now where we're getting plagued by silverfish. It's not solid with F1s, 
and actually what to do now but I'm persisting and there you go so setting that little trap with the pot is kind of just made the F1 kind of hone into that rather than feeding by hand on the bigger area so that's also a, a good little trick to keep up your sleeve so just to prove the method out we'll do the same again but we'll keep ringing the changes this time I'll put a double red maggot on perhaps it might be the red white combo again just thinking what can we change what can we keep our brain busy because on some of these cold winter days or even cold spring days when you're not catching huge weights keep talking in your head keep thinking what can I do to catch the next fish so again 20 maggots in there can't overfill it it's this medium pot ring the change this time we put a double red maggot on flick the maggots out back to your mark on your pole mark on the far bank feed your maggots lift your rig slightly out of the water and I actually had an indication and I think that's a bit of a silver fish so now trying to hold it and keep it straight out of the water I've noticed that that's twice now it's been taken on the drop so I'm just going to let my rig go in naturally and kind of pin it to the bottom and I'll have a better chance of getting the bait to the bottom Again, everything's in line, back shots just touching the water, add another bite. Right, there is another fish caught on this short maggot line at Tunnel Barn Farm. And I think I'm going to make this one the last one. We're starting to lose the light now, going a bit colder. I've got a four week old son to get home to but hopefully you can take a few of these tips and catch a few of these spring F1s and that is a lovely tunnel barn F1 to end the day on so like I said hopefully you can take a few of these tips make them useful put a few more fish in your net Get out there and give it a go.